today on the show we look at a 1998 Mercedes CLK 320 Elegance. Here we have a 98 Mercedes CLK 320. For me personally, I think this particular shape is one of the favourites of mine in the CLK range. This particular car has 18 inch AMG wheels on it that has somehow made its way onto the car somewhere between 98 and now, which I think looks quite good. I personally think the car still looks quite modern and stylish today. Maybe not as modern as 2004 does, but I still definitely don't think it looks like it's from the 90s. The 3.2 litre V6 puts out 160 kilowatt, 310 newton metres of torque, which makes this 1,420 kilogram chassis go to 100 kilometres an hour in 7.4 seconds. And on to the boot. You're probably thinking it's a two-door coupe, so you're not going to be able to fit a lot in the back. But that's where you're wrong. Now to open the boot, it's quite easy. You just hold this button down. And then that happens. No need to even pull the boot up. And look at the size of that. It's got a CD changer under here. We've got all the spare wheel and everything. And you can also, for even more space, pull these levers. Then all of a sudden, look at that, even more room. And another good thing about this car is, despite it being a two-door, you have quite a lot of room in the back seat still. I mean, look at me, I'm quite large. So I'm a perfect candidate to show just how much you can fit in the back seat of one of these. Look at that! There's enough room to fit an elephant back here. However, you won't be fitting anyone in the middle because it's just a four-seater, but it's a comfortable four-seater that you can fit quite a lot back here. And you've got headdress that the driver can put down after they're done by just a flick of a button. Watch. And the inside of the car is quite good as well. It feels all luxurious and quite well made, but I guess you sort of expect that of a Mercedes. It's got all the leather orthopedic seats, they're quite comfortable, but one thing is it doesn't have lumbar support, at least this particular car anyway. Leather steering wheel, which is good, uh, it's got all your little dials and aircon and everything, your window switches, your boot, uh, got some lighting options up here, got a nice sunroof tilt and uh, goes back and forth as well. When you put your car in reverse, the uh, left hand mirror goes down to uh, help you park and get right next to those curbs. A uh, steering wheel with reach but no tilt. We have fully electric seats by the way. When I was talking about the seats, I forgot to say anything about that. With full memory function, which is good on both the drivers and passenger. Uh, it's got multiple speakers throughout the car. Ooh, and the windscreen wiper. I gotta tell you about that. Look at that. It's like you're watching tennis. Of 
course, before we set off and drive, the first thing you have to do is close the door. Otherwise, later on, you might not have one. So you slightly pull the door closed, and unfortunately, it doesn't quite close. You really have to give it quite a hard pull to close it, which is definitely not Mercedes-esque. In fact, this was one of the biggest complaints about this car when it was new, is you really had to grab the handle and give it a hard pull. But after a while of grabbing the handle and giving it a hard pull, you get used to it. Anyway, let's uh, let's get started, shall we? Here we are. Let's put the key in here. Ooh, it starts. Oh, I should probably put the seatbelt on. Pull the foot brake. And let's get going. One of the first things I notice is it's quite quiet in the cabin. There's next to no engine noise, there's next to no real noise, no four pan noise. It's very quiet. It's quite comfortable, it's not too harsh in the ride. It just elegantly goes over the Steering wheel feel is quite, it's not light, but it's not heavy either. It's actually in a good in-between kind of spot. And the brakes, they're actually very good. They'll stop you quite quickly when you need to. These cars actually have where it can sense an emergency braking by how quickly you press down on the brake pedal is how hard it will put on the brake pedal. So in that absolute split second that you haven't even put down the brake pedal fully the car has already sensed that it's an emergency by how quickly that pedal has gone down and therefore will lock up the wheels instantly which is very good for a 1998 kind of car. I mean, a lot of cars even now don't have that sort of technology. Going around these nice turns seems to hug the corners quite well but this is the elegance this isn't the sport so when you're going around turns in a reasonable pace there is a little bit of lean to the car well probably more than a little bit but it's not boat like for instance it doesn't feel like you're at sea and it can accelerate quite well out of the corners as well even though this isn't a V8, it still has a reasonable amount of power out of this V6. And the gearbox in these turns, like, it's really holding the gear, it's not going up gears. The car adjusts to what you're doing. A lot of cars in this sort of scenario where I'm not flat out going through all these twisty turns, It'll go into fourth gear or fifth gear overdrive or something. But this car is just staying in the right gear. For a 90s automatic gearbox, this is actually quite good. One of the things I love about this car is its turning circle. I mean, this is quite a small area here, but look how easily I can do a 360. Whee! I practically just did a 360 on the spot there. Huh. Now, if 
if I wanted to, I could go flat out in this. Which I guess it is a review, so I guess I might do it for a split second. 6,000 RPM! Even though this may be like quite a long journey, it's quite comfortable to be. I'm not busting to get out of this seat. It can be quite a comfortable spot to be in for quite a long drive. Over these bumpy Australian roads, it does just tend to glide over them. The suspension has a really nice setup for the type of person that would buy this car. I mean, the sort of person that would buy this car wouldn't be hammering through these turns at 100 kilometers an hour. It's just set up to get from A to B in by class and style. But we're on a mostly gravel road right now. And trust me, this microphone picks up everything. And can you hear much road noise in this car, even though we're on a gravel road right now? Nope. It's quite insulated and it's really good. You can speak quite softly, like this, and the passenger will still hear you. Look, finally! We're back! On top of road. Whoopee! That's another thing about this car. See, cars are coming from this way, right? But you have to. Um, cars are coming this way, but looking this way, I actually can't see if there's any cars coming because that rear pillar is blocking the entire road. The eight pillars aren't too bad, but the back ones, they're so large, they can hide like a truck. But anyway, let's get going. Ooh, there's people on like scooters and stuff coming. Look at that. Huh. Uh, well, you know, I'm, I might go that way. Follow them. They might lead me back. Let's cap this car off, shall we? The conclusion. I quite like it. The engine, in my opinion, has enough power for something like this. Its fuel economy is quite good also. I've been testing this for a few days now and... You know what? I get probably... 600 kilometers quite easy to a tank in one of these and uh, it's quite smooth it's got the power it's quite comfortable you can fit a lot in the boot you can fit passengers in the back of one of these for a two door two door coupe it's not often you can find a car that can fit passengers quite comfortably in the back of and still fit a lot of luggage in the boot and to do all of this you can pick one of these up in on the market for under 10 grand easy and because there's quite a lot of them around in Australia and they've got to a slightly cheaper price point as well there are a lot of parts on the market for these so maintenance isn't extravagant either You'll probably think, oh, Mercedes, they cost a lot of money to fix, but a 98 Mercedes CLK like this actually doesn't really cost too much unless something drastically goes wrong. So, 
for the price you pay, the engine, the fuel economy, the luxury you get in here for under 10 grand for just a cheap daily driver, you can't really go wrong, can you? And uh, that about sums it up, I guess. Thanks for watching. Pop that subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.